Hello, Git is an important tool for programming. I consider it a standard tool for everyday use. It is mostly known for being easy to use for keeping code revisions, as well as supporting several branches to help with collaborating code changes with others, and even being used as a backup for code itself. Let me show you how to easily set up a repository and commonly use commands. For all the tutorial code and content I make, I always keep it accessible on GitHub. While you can always just simply download the code directly from the site, you can use git commands to not only download the code, but keep it up to date with any changes with a simple command. I'll be showing just the basics in this video, so if you want a more in-depth tutorial, I suggest looking into the book Pro Git by Scott Checkon and Ben Straub. It's available online at this address. Repositories are stored on a remote location, be it on a separate computer, GitHub, or GitLab, as, well as among many other options. For this tutorial, we'll be using GitHub as our remote repository location. To work on a repository, it must be cloned to the local machine. Any changes must then be committed and pushed to the remote repository. The first thing we need to do is to create a repository. So on GitHub, go to uh, click on your profile and click on your repositories. It'll take you to this page. All you got to do is you got to click new repository name, uh, tutorial, video. Sure, it says it's available. That's cool description. Uh, this is a repo for a tutorial video, and you can choose if you want it public or private. Public means anyone can access it. Private means only you can access it, as well as choosing who you want to see this repository. So what I suggest doing with a new repository is uh, go ahead and click Add a Read Me and Add Ignore. And if you want, you can even choose a license. So for this, it's just a, uh, it's just yeah. You, there's there's so many licenses. I'm not going to do license for this one. And then um, after that, wait. You do need to choose a license, right? Now you can't click the button. Why can't you click the button? Dude. Click the button. Alright. Oh. oh, get ignore template. Okay. That's awesome. Um. That one for Python. There's a, okay. Let me redo that part. So we're gonna come out here. And after that, you can initialize the repository and add a README file, as well as a git ignore file. And for this, we're going to use a Python template for git ignore. And you can even choose a license. There's a lot of different licenses you can choose from. Um, it's helpful to actually go through and see what each license does. For the purpose of this video, we're not going to choose a license. And after that, we just create the repository. It's that easy. Now our repository is created. Okay, before we jump into the commands itself, let me talk about branches a little bit. So, no changes should ever be made directly within the main working branch. Uh, the main working branch is typically main, but it could be called master for older repositories. It's a preference. Uh, I use master for my main working branches. It's my preference. It's what I'm used to. Um, with new projects, I set up my branches using the name of the project for specific tasks and projects. For, what, for working in a live environment, I use the hotfix branch for urgent changes and the bug fix branch for standard changes. Changes in the bug fix branch go through proper testing before being merged with master and going live. So bugs and help tickets typically use hotfix or bug fix only, and projects will use their own project branches. Code should be tested to make sure it works on a local machine before being committed and pushed to the remote repository. On a development server, branches are often swapped to whatever branch needs to be tested. And uh, a development server is a clone of the live server, but it isn't publicly accessible. The live server is always on master or main, unless there's a major migration, but for the most part it's always on master. 
the first thing we need to do is we need to clone the repository to the local machine. So first navigate to the working directory. In my case, it's Python. Next we'll need to go to GitHub and we're going to navigate to the repository we want to clone. In this case we're using Python tutorial game. And then under code what we've normally been doing is just downloading the zip of the files. But in this case what we're going to do is click SSH and then we're going to click copy and then what we're going to do is we're going to clone it into its own directory. So we type in git clone, we paste the address, and then we type in the name of the directory we want to clone it into. So it, say, it says cloning into tutorial game, and if we go into that directory, here's all our files. Magic. Before we start using the everyday commands, we first need to make sure git is set up properly. So if we type in git config list, we'll see that our email and username are not set. So let's go ahead and set those. We're going to type in git config, and we want to set this globally, and then the name of the variable, it's user email, and I'm going to type in my email address. And we're going to do the same thing for the username. global user name so in a work environment you'd probably use your real name not an alias so now if we do git config list we can now see that our global variables are set and to just get started th these are the only ones we need to actually worry about for now now let's get into the actual commands so within our repository that we're on our local machine. So the first command we're going to look at is git pull. So git pull pulls everything from the remote repository and updates our files on the local machine. And this says already up to date, which means we match what's on the remote repository. The next command is we're going to do git commit. So we're going to change something in the readme. We're going to do like hotfix. This branch is for hotfixes. We're going to save it. Now that we've changed the file, we can do it git commit. And we're going to use the flag A for all the files. And we're going to do M for the message. Added hotfix branch to the readme. So this told us that one file was changed with one insertion. An insertion is always represented with a plus, a deletion with a minus. So if we delete this line and we do git commit, we're going to say that we removed comments from the readme. It's going to tell us that there was one deletion with a minus. So now the next command we're going to do is git push. So git push updates the remote repository with the changes that we had on the local machine. And this will tell us that fancy words and stuff, I may know some of those words. But basically, it's saying that to GitHub, it updated the branch hotfix. The next command is git status. So right now, it's telling us everything is up to date. So if we do, if we do have a change, we can type git status, and it'll tell us that there was a file that was modified. In this case, it's the readme file. What we can also do is, if we add a new file, we're going to save this as <clears throat> test.txt. This is going to be, this is a test file. And save it. So if we do git status again, 
it's going to tell us that there's an untracked file named test.txt. So we need to add that file to the repository. We can do that with git add test.txt. It didn't add it. Oh, because we need to spell it right. It's test.txt. There we go. So now it's added. So now if we do a, a git status, it says new file test. And of course, if we do a git commit for everything, so change readme and added new file, that would apply a commit message to both files. So we've added a file, we can also remove a file. So git rm test.txt. So we can't remove it yet because it hasn't been committed to the repository. So we need to run that commit command. Added comment to readme, and then added file test.txt. So now that it's been committed, our git status is telling us it's up to date, but that we need to push. So let's remove that file now. Git rm test.txt. It's now removed from the repository. A git status will tell us deleted. So we're going to commit removed test.txt. Now that it's committed, everything is up to date. And our file, however, so test has been deleted. When you remove a file from the repository, it, it also deletes it from your files. So that file doesn't exist anymore. Very important to know. So with branches, I talked ab earlier about how you have like hotfix and bug fix. And if you want to create a new branch, say you're working on a new project, let's check out always create a branch from the master branch because when you do git branch it'll create a new branch that is a copy of the current branch you're working in <clears throat> and when you make a branch yeah it's a copy okay so I'm gonna call this new branch so we've created a new branch now we can do git checkout new branch to change to that branch. And of course, since we made the branch, but we haven't pushed it to the remote repository yet, it's going to tell us that we need to push the current branch and set the remote as upstream. So it actually needs to put that remote branch into our remote repository. <clears throat> so say we have, we've done a lot of coding here. This is a lot of advanced hacker coding we're doing. We save this. And then, uh... We're like, oh no! We need to work on something else. What we can do is we can stash our changes. So when we type in git stash, it remembers everything that you've been working on and it puts it into... A, uh, whoops. I think it's minus L. Oh my goodness. I'll just get stash list. Okay. So when we type get stash list, it's going to tell us everything that was stashed into an index, index of zero. So if we do git stash show the stash, it's going to show us that readme has four additions to it. Um, if we do git diff, okay. Alright, we need to retrieve the stash. Um, Use dash uh, apply zero. Uh, 
Okay, so we've retrieved from the stash and we're back into what we're working on. The next command is git diff. Git diff will tell us exactly what is uh, what has changed. You can also do this between different branches. So git diff hotfix. It'll tell us what's in the hotfix branch as well as what is in our current working branch. The branch we're comparing to will be in red and green is our current branch. Now say that we've made a big oops and uh oh we don't want to we don't want to commit this we just want to undo everything. So I like to call this the tactical nuke. We can do git reset hard head. So now if we do a git diff all those changes that we did are gone. So that resets our branch to head Head is the most recent uh, commit of our branch. And if we type in a git log, git log will give us addresses of every commit that we've done. So what we can do is we can copy this address. And if we do a git reset and we paste that address, it's going to tell us what changes were after the reset. So if we do a git status, it tells us our modified. A git diff will show us what exactly was modified. You can navigate this. And if we do a git pull, it's going to bring us back up to date. Oh, no tracking information for the current branch, which is fine. We don't want to keep this branch. So let's get check out master it's not gonna work because our local changes would be overwritten because we've reset to a place that was before head so we can either do a git stash or we can do the git reset hard head get check out master and we're not back on master and you know what that's it those are all the basic everyday commands that you need. That's enough to cause quite a bit of damage. For further learning, I suggest simply searching any errors you come across, or as mentioned earlier in the video, read ProGit. It's online and it's free. Thank you for watching and have fun in your coding endeavors.